We often use CDEs in a SQL queries to simplify complex logic, but these are a few mistakes that you should avoid when defining a CTE. When you define a CTE, you put the CTE definition within these round brackets, but should you or should you not terminate the CTE definition with a semicolon? In case it seems right to terminate it with a semicolon, let's just try to execute this SQL query. When we try to execute this SQL query, you will see that you get an incorrect syntax message, which means that we are not supposed to use a semicolon after the CTE definition, so that SQL considers all these statements as a single batch and is able to use your CTE in the select query that we have defined over the CTE. There might be a requirement in which we need to order the data by a particular column in our data set. So if we define a CTE and add an order by column, is that going to work? Let's try to execute this query again. And you can see that the order by clause is invalid in the use of a CTE. So when you define a CTE, keep in mind that you do not use the order by clause. But there's an exception. You can use the order by clause when you want to use a top statement. So if you just want to select top 2% or 3% rows, which will be based on that order by logic. So you want to sort by the department name and then you just want to uh, select the top two rows, then you can use an order by in the CTE. So if you say top two department ID from department, order by department ID, and now if you try to execute this query, you are going to get an output result. So if the order by can only be included when you are using a top command in the CTE definition. If you are defining multiple CTEs, that is possible. So you can define multiple CTEs in a single statement, in a single batch of statement. When you define multiple CTEs, you just need to separate them by a comma. You do not need to use the with word or with clause again for defining your second CTE. So now in this particular example, we have used the with clause. I'm just going to try to execute this query and I'm expecting an error message which you can see over here so there's incorrect syntax near the keyword width which is referencing to this width if I just go and remove this width and try to execute the query again you're going to get a result so keep in mind that when you're defining multiple CTEs you do not need to repeat the width clause for the other CTEs in certain scenarios, we need to use variables for defining a SQL query. So if you want the value to not be a constant, if you do not want to hard code the value, for example, in this case, we do not want to hard code the alphabet in our way of filter on the department name. So we have used a variable over here where we are passing the value of that particular alphabet that we want to check on. So if I just execute this part of the query as simple SQL statement, it should give me some result. Now I've included this as a CTE. So I've included all this within a CTE definition and I'm trying to execute, I'm trying to select the output from my CTE. So I'm going to execute this whole SQL code that I've written, but I get an error message saying incorrect syntax near the keyword declare. This is because a CTE, for a CTE, your first statement should be your select query. It has to be a select query. So you need to remove this declare from here and move it to outside the CTE definition. So I'm going to move it over here and now it should be able to use your variable value in the CTE. So now I'm going to execute this again and the CTE will execute fine. So for the CTE definition, always remember that the first statement has to be a select statement. Another interesting point is that your CTE definition must be followed by a single select, insert, update, or delete statement. So here we have a single select statement and it is going to give us an output. But if I try to put another select statement just after this, it is not going to work on the same CTE. So here I'm just going to try to execute and then I'm going to get some error message saying that there is invalid ob object name called CT underscore department. So the select second select statement was not able to reference this CTE. Now, when you say that it should be followed by a single select insert update delete statement. So if I do a delete over here, 
So if I do a delete star from CTE underscore department, the CTE underscore department has got one output result set, which is department ID one. Then it is going to delete from the underlying table. So let's say select star from department and just try to execute this query. You will see that there are four departments over here. Now, if I go and say delete star from CT underscore department, so I'm just executing the whole statement together. Let's remove the star over here and just execute this. Then you will see that one row has been affected, which implies that data has been deleted and data has been deleted from your base table. So if we go back and check the base table, you will see that now there are only three records in this table. The same applies for the insert update statements as well. So if you want to insert into, let's say, the CTE, and we're going to insert the values that we just deleted. So I'm just going to say one and HR again. I'm going to execute this value. So column name or number of supplied values does not match table definition because here we have just defined one column. So let's define department ID and sorry, what was the depart other column name it was department name. So department name. And now let's try to execute our query again. And you will see that one row has been affected. So here we expect that this value should be inserted back into the base table, which you can see has been the case. So when you delete, when you insert, when you update a CTE, it is going to go and modify the table, the data in your base table. Always keep this in mind. This logic has been used in a very common scenario of deleting duplicate values from the table. So this logic can be used at many places, but be careful when you are using these operations on the CTE because it can modify your underlying data as well. I hope you liked this video and it had some interesting topics for you to understand how to be careful while defining a CT. If you found this useful, then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.